Diagnosing epilepsy. Um, it can be a very long and frustrating process, but I have been through it firsthand. Um, and so I guess I'll just go through it step by step. If it's something that you suspect and you know your dog is obviously having seizures um, and you would wonder why. And so the first step is usually when you make an appointment with your veterinarian, um, you're gonna go through First of all, identifying whether your dog actually had a seizure or not, um, because there are other conditions like fainting. Um, there are other conditions that aren't full-on seizures. There, you know, there's all kinds of different things out there that aren't necessarily a seizure. So, first of all, you're going to work together with your veterinarian to figure out whether that actually was a seizure. Uh, always really helpful in this day and age with the technology we have. If you have a video clip of it on your phone, very very useful for the veterinarian. Um, so once you've discovered and, and you've come together and you've got that information together and yes, your dog is having a seizure, okay? Uh, so we have to work out why. There are so many reasons why dogs can have seizures. And it can be, you know, that your dog has a seizure for some reason and you fix that reason and it would never happen again. Or it can be uh, the opposite end of the scale in that genetically your dog just has epilepsy and there's not a whole lot you can do about it apart from try and control those seizures. So. The first step your doctor is always going to want to take is to run a full blood profile because there are certain things that can take place in your animal's body that build up toxins effectively, which then, you know, the brain is connected to the body, it's bathed in the same blood supply and oxygen supply as every other organ in the body, and so if there's toxins in there, your brain's going to be really unhappy about it, and that potentially could cause a seizure. So, you know, looking at the blood work, looking at the liver values, looking at the kidney values, it's going to give you some idea as to whether there's a problem there that can be addressed and treated and then your dog would stop having seizures so it's not necessarily epilepsy now in epilepsy cases you're usually going to see that the blood work is normal um, more often than not so you're then going to have to take further steps usually um, in terms of getting some kind of higher imaging done um, this is usually done at a specialist facility because we're talking about things like MRI scans um, and also spinal taps. There are certain very rare parasites and even infections of the spinal cord that can cause a seizure. And the only way to diagnose this is with you know, taking a sample of spinal fluid and testing it for those parasites or those inflammatory cells. Um, an MRI is obviously going to take an image of the brain um, and detect whether there would be potentially in an older pet a tumor in there which could cause seizures or just some kind of abnormal brain activity or lesion in the brain um, to make make it so that your dog would be having a seizure uh, once you've done all those things and you've ruled those things out pretty much at this point we are going to get to it being epilepsy which is carried I think they have now discovered it's carried on one of the genes um, and it's classed as epilepsy and and then we're at the point of learning to control those seizures and those convulsions so that we're not going to get more of them um, in the particular pet.